On behalf of the Board of Solidarity 2010 Association, I would like to welcome our special guest. It's a great honor uh, to the, and uh, our great thank you for the special visit in Poland and we invite you uh, very warmly uh, to speak about uh, your history. Również witamy pana Aleksandra Rybczyńskiego, którego nasi sympatycy i pewnie większość państwa miała okazję już poznać. Pan Aleksander Rybczyński, no, wybitny poeta przede wszystkim, również twórca polskiej kultury, bardzo powiązanej również z polską historią. Good evening. It's a great uh, honor to, to be here in Poland in this uh, very important centenary year. To wielki zaszczyt być tutaj w, w Polsce w, w roku stulecia odzyskania w, niepodległości. Our, our mission here is um, a simple one, but a profoundly important one, which is to honor the 250,000 Polish uh, airmen, um, seamen, and soldiers, and scientists who played such a decisive role in winning the Second World War. It's a very, uh, it's a very moving moment for us to be, uh, to be here. More than 20 years ago, on Mount Ormel, my brothers and I, with our families, uh, were moved by the sacrifice of the Polish Armor Division under General Maciek, who held Mount Ormel, closed the Falaise Gap and ended the campaign in Normandy. Uh, it was a heroic action uh, on the part of the Poles, and uh, we were so moved by that achievement that we decided one day, uh, when uh, life was a little slower for us, and we weren't running around the world on business and other things, that we would uh, come here to Warsaw and uh, we would lay a wreath to the 1st Polish Armored Division and also a wreath uh, honoring the 250,000 Poles that fought in the, the Second World War, that helped win the Second World War on land, 
and on sea and in the air. It was a, it was a remarkable achievement and we came here to honor those men and to honor Poland. And we did it as three brothers from Canada and I've been very moved by the other people that have come out for this ceremony. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just quite extraordinary. And the things that have been given to us here are almost uh, beyond words. Thank you. It's certainly an honor to be here, along with my brothers, uh, to help show our appreciation for the, the Polish soldiers and, and the country of Poland. And, and I, uh, coincidentally, have moved and retired into uh, the first Polish community in Canada, and near Wilno, or Barry's Bay, Ontario. And, and the, the solid family uh, upbringing and sense of community that exists, that I feel here, I also feel back in Barry's Bay. That's very well said. Um, it's, it's been a total honor to be here. Uh, with my brothers, it's been really special. Uh, the people of Poland have been more than generous to us. Uh, the associations that we've made here, we're going to do some, uh, hopefully develop this winged alliance we gave away all our pins but that's the name of the the pin it's called the winged alliance so we are now allied again as a as a group of people that believe in values and freedoms and and the, the polish people have so much so much to tell the world that we're going to help them tell the story We come here um, as free citizens of a free country. We ask for no sponsorship or financial support. We did that so we could speak our mind. This is our gesture 
from three brothers to the Polish people. So the Poles were decisive in the Battle of the Atlantic, in the Battle of Britain, in the Battle of Normandy, in the breaking of the Enigma Code. They, it was an extraordinary history. And uh, we felt, one, we wanted to honor that, and two, we want to communicate that message back into Canada where there's very little understanding of the significance of the Polish rule and very little understanding of the fact that the West betrayed Poland after the war, which is a shameful Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, English language panel, Poland in World's Eyes. Uh, make yourself comfortable, because we are going to uh, discuss a very important subject. Next, brothers that decided to honor brothers in arms. Canadian brothers of Irish uh, descent that decided to honor uh, Polish brothers in arms, Captain Barry Sheehy and Captain Matt Sheehy. Ladies and gentlemen, fans of General Maciek, Maciek, they will tell us what to do to break, to break our beautiful history to the world, because they are themselves the best example that people from outside can, can promote our history better than many people here. Does the world care about Poland? Matt, Captain, please. Uh, obviously, my brother Barry and I are here because uh, we were moved by the history of the Polish 1st uh, Armored Division that was at the Battle of uh, Falaise in Normandy uh, under the command of the 1st uh, Canadian Army. Um, I think Poland is now uh, obviously taking a lead not only in Europe but in the world which I think uh, is appropriate and my brother Barry is a historian so he can give you more perspective on that but my first visit here I've traveled all over the world but Poland is one of those countries that you sort of miss on your travels. Barry, does the world care about Poland, about our history? Uh, yes, I think in the, in the right circles it does. I think the problem uh, Poland faces in its broad communications with the world, particularly with the West, is that uh, all that communications has to go through the prism of a very ideologically liberal press. Uh, and so that sometimes garbles the, uh, the message. On the other hand, uh, I think for those people that, um, that, that uh, understand the strategic importance of Poland, it's very clear that the center of gravity in uh, Europe, at least from a defense point of view, and perhaps even from a thinking uh, point of view, is shifting into Central Europe. And Poland is reestablishing itself uh, as um, uh, a central uh, source of stability uh, in Central Europe. And it is, a, it is a role the Poles have played before. One of the things that we were most struck by when we began to educate ourselves around the role of uh, the Poles in the Second World War, which was extraordinary, um, uh, is that the Poles have often, and frankly almost regularly, come to the defense of Western civilization at critical moments, whether that is at the gates of Vienna or in 1919 or during the Second World War. And I think the key to a stable Europe uh, is, in fact, uh, the establishment of, the, of Poland uh, as a central source of, st of stability. That's a very important message, and I think it's a role that um, uh, Poland is, is destined uh, to play. I think the, the world would like to care, but uh, one of the suggested titles to the panel was uh, Poland in the mirror of the world and uh, I think right now it's kind of a cracked mirror and behind that mirror there is a uh, mainstream media who 
really uh, present the not accurate uh, picture of, of Poland. So History uh, should be a, a sort of a, a living uh, organism. In other words, uh, we don't forget about it, because Barry pointed out quite clearly, those who forget history and don't learn from it are bound to repeat the same mistakes over and over, and we seem to be unable to learn from history. In, in the West, or Canada in particular, there seems to be an attempt to deny our history or to change it or whatever. And if we carry on like that, uh, there we won't have a country. So, you know, by all means, celebrate your history, by all means. And, and we in the West are making, uh, it's really unfair to our, our youngsters and all that, that we don't tell our history, tell it truthfully as well. Like, let's tell the truth. And that's something that's missing as well. Okay, we're making a movie about, uh, I don't know, uh, the Battle of Britain. Well, you know, we've got to have a lot of those British pilots there. We've got a couple of Canadians thrown in. And where are the Poles, right? They were significant. They were there. And they made a difference. Remember, the history is not what was. History is what is. You are making history today. Poland is moving forward. Poland is being successful. You are making it successful. And don't let people whose policies are failing hold you back. Push them aside, move on, let the results speak for themselves, and then let them catch up. Pan towarzyszy w tej podróży braciom Sichi. Jak to się stało, że jak, jak, się, jak się panowie poznaliście? Pan, pan jest emigracyjnym poetą, publicystą, mieszka w Toronto. Poznaliśmy się dzięki, dzięki portalowi Polska Kanada, który y, redaguje. Jest to skromny portal. Y, mamy kilku współprac wielu współpracowników, ale właściwie redaguje go sam wspólnie z pomocą żony, która jest grafikiem komputerowym i ten skromny zespół robi wszystko. I portal jest poświęcony literaturze, sztuce, muzyce, ale w dzisiejszym świecie trudno ograniczyć się tylko do, do tych spraw w sytuacji, kiedy wiele tematów jest przemilczanych przez media głównego nurtu i, i trudno pozostać obojętym. Ta taka żyłka y, publicystyczna i y, potrzeba y, mówienia prawdy no, z, y, zmusza mnie do, do podejmowania tematów, które są pomijane. Portal prowadzony jest głównie w języku polskim, ale ponieważ y, jesteśmy w Kanadzie, s, s, staram się też, by była zawartość y, w języku angielskim i dzięki temu poznałem najpierw Mata Shihi, który z, zwrócił się do mnie z taką sprawą kanadyjską, bo właśnie trzeba powiedzieć, że, że kapitanowie nie tylko interesują się historią, ale są zaangażowani w 
różne obywatelskie sprawy dotyczące aktualnych wydarzeń w Kanadzie. No i tak została ta wiadomość, znajomość nawiązana. No i potem dowiedziałem się o, o tej historii, którą opowiedział tutaj pięknie Bary i o tym, że nadszedł czas, że chcieliby się wybrać do Polski i zapytali mnie, jak to zrobić. No i od tego czasu zaczęły się przygotowania i udało się zainteresować IPN i jej prezesa, doktora Jarosława Szarka, którzy zgodzili się podjąć trud organizacji tych uroczystości w Polsce. A pan jest takim dobrym duchem tej podróży i przewodnikiem po Polsce, po, po też po polskiej, polskiej duszy. No tak, ja jestem szczęśliwy, że, że, że znalazłem tak wspaniałych przyjaciół wśród Kanadyjczyków, takich, z którymi mogę o wszystkim porozmawiać. Doskonale się rozumiemy i okazało się, że, że moja pomoc w Polsce też okazała się przydatna, bo, bo to jednak jest duże przedsięwzięcie. This journey began uh, almost 20 years ago uh, in Normandy, where um, we as a family, um, all, three, all three brothers, um, have taken a number of trips to Normandy and we bring our children there. And we, uh, we do that because it's important for them to understand living in a, a peaceful society and, and insulated from um, many of the dangers in the world. To, to go to a place like Normandy to understand that freedom is never free. And so that's the message we wanted our children uh, to see and experience. Uh, some years ago I met uh, and worked on a project to honor a Canadian medical orderly who was 94 and he won the Legion of Honor from France uh, and he had been part of the first Canadian Army hospital that was halfway between Caen and Falaise and I asked him about the battle And he said, yeah, as we got closer to Falaise, we began to receive truckloads and truckloads of Polish uh, casualties. Uh, and he, I never forget, I never forget what he said. He said, ah, the brave Poles. Uh, we saved as many as we could. Uh, I was moved almost to, to tears at the, at the achievement, at the, at the military achievement, at the bravery at the tenacity, at the grit of the Poles. The West owes Poland uh, uh, a debt of gratitude. Uh, and we also have to communicate a, um, a painful message to Canada that the West, including Canada, abandoned Poland in 1945-46 at Yalta and the events following. And that's something that nobody really wants to talk about. But it was a shameful event. And it is part of history. It really happened. Uh, and um, so you took these tremendously brave allies, courageous allies, and then who helped you in the war, and then you abandoned them as a matter of political convenience. Uh, so it's a shameful episode in the history of, of the West. Uh, and, uh, and it's a story that we feel obligated to tell when we're in Canada on the CBC or TV or in radios or in publishing articles as, as I've done. You find Poland coming again and again and again to the defense of the West. Whether it was at the, the gates of Vienna or in 1920, or in the Second World War. The Poles uh, have always come to the defense of the West. And the West has not always reciprocated uh, that fidelity. And uh, it's certainly clear to me that for 
a peaceful Europe and for a safe Western Europe, it requires a strong Poland at the center of Europe. Barry was alluding to, you know, the fact that we're Canadians, but of Irish descent. Um, my grandfather came from Ireland, and my grandmother on the Sheehy side. And um, my father was a f uh, fireman, a firefighter, captain. Yeah. And he, he instilled, and my mother, instilled in us um, a good, good values. And one of the things that <laughs> we remember well is that if you believe in something, if you sincerely believe in it, you know, say what you mean and mean what you say. Stand your ground and uh, a, uh, uh, an honest person, an honest man, can be a majority, one. And as uh, Pope John said, do not be, uh, be not afraid. So we're not, hmm. so we're here. If, if, you don't, if you don't explain to uh, our children and our population history, Real history, real honest to God history, not, you know, sugar-coated, yeah, you know, we fought, Canadians did a lot in the Second World War. And, and they don't even teach that history in our school. To me, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. So our, our children are kind of living in a, you know, a very comfortable, um, less stress environment. And um, they have, are totally unaware of the challenges and the dangers in this world. I've traveled, you know, as a pilot all around the world, and I've witnessed and, and I, 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 I enjoyed every different country I was in because of their ethnicity and all that, their food and you know, their language, what have you. And I'm um, very saddened to see this, uh, this uh, attempt to, to turn everyone into some sort of a global environment where everyone's the same, no one challenges anything, um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to lead, it already is leading to the slow decay of our Western society. We have uh, a tradition in, in Canada of uh, freedom of speech, but it's not like the U.S. Uh, constitutional guarantees. Ours is based on uh, more tradition than anything else. And uh, we have uh, a, an old constitution and we also have what they call uh, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It's a charter. It's, it's basically, we think this is a good idea. And, and the charter is a, a good uh, piece of legislation, if you will. But in the last 20 years or so, the mainstream media and uh, certain elitists all around the world are slowly eroding our freedom of speech. There's some legislation that uh, is being uh, move forward in, in Parliament that would suggest that if I offend somebody by whatever I say, then I've committed a crime. It's a hate speech. Mm -hmm. And, y y you know, there's, it's like, um, I have a bit of a description of what's happening. Uh, freedom of speech is not like a, a, a real stat where you turn the light up, turn it down, you know, whatever you know, mood you're in. It's an on and off switch. And we're about to turn it off. So we're fighting, Alec, myself, my brothers, and I have lots of associates all around the world. And um, we're going to fight for that. And uh, we're not going to give up. And the polls have been, uh, they inspire us. Yes. Absolutely. Yes.
okay, but so maybe just say about something about Krakow, how, how was Poland, and um, how you enjoying stay here. So um, here we are in beautiful medieval uh, Krakow. Um, it's an extraordinary um, city, rich in history. Uh, I understand one of the few medieval cities in Poland to have survived the war. Um, and uh, it's just an extraordinary place. The whole world is here. Um, and um, uh, if you stand on the corner, you'll hear uh, 10 different languages spoken. So uh, it's a good way to end our trip uh, in Poland, where we've been so graciously received uh, by everybody in Poland, by all the Polish people. And uh, we're very proud to have been here, and we uh, consider ourselves very lucky to be here. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey with our, our Polish brother, Alec. Um, it's been busy, it's been sometimes hectic, um, but uh, the Polish people have been very kind to us, and we've met a lot of friends here, and we hope to come back again soon. Thank you. On board. Alec, what do you have to say about this voyage, this Project Magic? How wonderful it was. To wszystkie uroczystości są już za nami. Przyjechaliśmy do Krakowa, żeby trochę odpocząć i zobaczyć to piękne moje rodzinne miasto. Bad i bary bardzo dobrze się tu czują. I Kraków jak zawsze piękny i pogodę mamy wyjątkowo dobrą jak na październik. Także y, bardzo się cieszę, że cała wyprawa się udała i teraz możemy chwilę odpocząć i napić się razem kawy, spotkać jeszcze więcej przyjaciół. Dziękuję. Dziękuję. Dziękuję.